So I've been asked quite a few questions and this is a background to answer one of them. Now what I've drawn here is one of uh, your red blood cells. It's darker on the outside and lighter on the inside because it's a biconcave disc. And these are about seven micrometers in diameter, seven microns. And you'll get about five million of them in a cubic millimeter of your blood. So one coronavirus is 100 nanometers in diameter. That means you can get 10 coronaviruses in one micrometer. And this is seven micrometers here. So here, drawn to the same scale, I've drawn 70 coronaviruses drawn to the same scale as the, <laughs> as the red cell. Just lets you know how, how small these are, only really properly visible with an electron microscope. Good evening. <laughs> now, um, here's some other viral diseases. Smallpox. Um, <clears throat> this was famously uh, vaccinated against or inoculated against by Edward Jenner. I've actually got a, a video of that on my website somewhere about the story of that fascinating story. I might put a link up to that. Um, devastated the population of South America and North America <clears throat> when Europeans first arrived. Um, quite an appalling virus. Now, I'm delighted to say eradicated from the world. Um, by a very effective vaccination campaign. Common cold is viral. Um, can be caused by the rhinovirus. Can be caused by the coronavirus. Influenza is viral. Influenza A and B causing flu measles, mumps, which is viral. Mumps is infection, it's infective paratitis, the parotid salivary glands swell up. Rubella, which is German measles, chickenpox, which brings uh, kids out in uh, pustular sort of spots all over. <coughs> and, and that virus can also remain dormant in the, um, in the sensory no nerves, in the, uh, in the dorsal root horn of the spinal cord and um, or dorsal nerve ganglia rather of the spinal cord and can re-emerge later as a uh, shingles same virus hepatitis it can be hepatitis a b c d and e yeah there's five known viral hepatitises um we won't go into those <laughs> herpes uh, herpes uh, simplex virus um Mouth cold sores, genital cold sores, can cause more serious infections. A poliomyelitis is a is a is a virus. There we go, back in focus. <clears throat> Polio is a virus. Still sad to see a few new cases of that just recently. Uh, I actually saw some fairly recent cases in Indian villages. Remarkably sad to see with a paralysing effect it can have on children. Almost eradicated now, but there are a few pockets from from place to place. Well, I think India claims to be polio-free now, which is pretty wonderful. Human immunodeficiency virus, uh, dengue, and of course, coronavirus. SARS-1, now SARS-2, and the uh, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome virus. So, <clears throat> a bit, bit of background there on viral, viral illnesses. Now, of course, no viral illness responds to antibiotics. So... Um, a bit difficult to treat most of them, um, let me think. Uh, influenza, Tamiflu gives a little bit of benefit. Uh, hepatitis, there are some expensive treatments for hepatitis, some of the hepatitis viruses. Herpes uh, does respond quite well to acyclovir, that's one we can treat fairly well. HIV, we have antiretrovirals um, which, which keep the disease at bay. And at the moment we don't have anything for this, but we're working on that, or the Chinese are working on that very hard at the moment. So most viral conditions we can't treat. So the, re the reason I brought this up was I've had lots of questions. Uh, first question. <coughs> is, is this virus a bioweapon? Uh, the answer is yes, all viruses are bioweapons, but, but not a man-made one. Now, in nature, I was looking at an article today, there's 10 to the 31 viruses or more than that. I mean, the viruses are the most diverse form of whatever they are, whether you want to call them life or not, on the planet. Billions and billions and billions of types of viruses. 
but they play an important part in ecosystems. So for example, most viruses are bacteriophages. They will infect bacteria <clears throat> and they will kill the bacteria. They'll infect and kill the bacteria. And in the oceans, for example, this is the main way that carbon is recycled into the carbon cycle. So they're all important in, um, in ecosystems. But um, there are some papers going around claiming that this is produced as a bioweapon. Now, if the Chinese wanted to produce a bioweapon, they could do a better job than this. It's not a bioweapon, it's from nature. It's a zoonotic transfer. This is why the World Health Organization is banning <laughs> Is banning and trying to ban a lot of these videos and things because <clears throat> you get people talking all sorts of rubbish on them. Conspiracy theorists. Um, it's a zoonotic infection. And we need to change the way we interact with nature because there's another 10 to the 31 viruses out there that could potentially... Actually, there's less than that can affect <clears throat> complicated animals like us with eukaryotic cells, but there's still a lot. Right, next question. Why did the Thai taxi driver catch COVID-19... Um, when he took an infected passenger to the airport, even though the infected passenger was wearing a mask. <clears throat> well, the reason for this is that the virus can get around the side of the masks, and masks aren't that effective anyway. And when they get wet, they're not effective. So, And a taxi is a very small space, so it's not surprising. Now, <clears throat> the ongoing bizarre story of the Diamond Princess. Well, it's turning into a tragic story, really. This is the cruise ship in Yokohama in Japan. It's been in quarantine now for 13 days. Yesterday, there was another nine, uh, 99 cases uh, identified. They did 504 tests, and pretty well 20% of those are positive. Now, 454 positive cases. There is now no question in my mind that this virus is being spread on the ship. And uh, if I was on that ship now, I'd be pretty uncomfortable because the virus is being spread on the ship. Whether it's being spread by the crew delivering the food, because the crew, of course, are moving around the ship and presumably associating with each other, <coughs> or whether it's spread in the air, we don't know. But we do know this virus is much easier to catch than we thought. So... Um, really time for the Japanese government to, to end this uh, situation. More people are becoming infected. Now, um, <clears throat> if I wasn't on air, I'd use a stronger term than this, but there seems to be a bit of a mess up with the Westerdam. So the Westerdam, remember, was the cruise ship that no one wanted, and it finally docked in Sihanoukville in Cambodia. And the passengers just made their way home on their own. Um, one passenger flew, American passenger I think, flew to the Philippines where they were diagnosed as positive for COVID-19. The other 91 passengers I've just learned today flew back to the Netherlands, or 91 passengers flew back to the Netherlands, just they just booked flights and they flew back. So we had 91 potentially infected passengers on flights. Let's hope they weren't infected, but now they're in the Netherlands, so let's hope the Netherlands authority are, are uh, chasing those up as we speak. That was a bit of a, I think that the Dutch authorities might have dropped the ball slightly there. Now, just a bit of news today. Um, these are from my Chinese website. <clears throat> so as we all know by now, the virus is called SARS-CoV-2. The disease is called COVID-19. And it's Monday the 17th of February. Current confirmed cases. Now we know these are gross underestimates, but these are the Chinese official figures. It's what they've confirmed. We know they're underestimates. Accumulated confirmed cases, suspected cases. Still, this is still really concerning me, the high proportion of, cons of, of, of serious cases, because if we get a lot of cases all at the same time, <clears throat> as a result of person-to-person -person transmission in your town, uh, I am very concerned the medical authorities can't treat lots and lots all at the same time. We simply can't. So quite what's going to happen, we're not sure. Confirmed deaths, we know are way higher than this, but that's, that's the confirmed figure. Now, the, the recovered cases are good. The, the Chinese criteria for recovered cases are actually quite exacting. Uh, two negative swabs, <coughs> improving chest x-ray, um, no, no fever for 10 days. And as far as we know, this is still this is still much the same. So where does that leave us um, in terms of the news? Um, well, 
basically what we're seeing is is ongoing spread. I mean, there's there's hundreds of millions of Chinese locked down in in uh, quarantine. So the Chinese are doing a tremendous job to try and um, delay this. But I think what we know about the transmissibility of this virus now means that everywhere needs to prepare for a potential pandemic. Now, the World Health Organization, I think they're going on air again tomorrow. <clears throat> so let's hope they come up with something. Uh, maybe a little more than they have at the moment. My view is at the moment we're in the early stages of a pandemic. Uh, we don't know how this is going to pan out. I still hope I'm wrong. Um, but if I'm right, over the next two to three weeks, we're going to see a lot of person-to-person -person transmission in, in a wide variety of countries, probably including my country. And the epidemic could become more severe in the next two to three months. Uh, I think that's what might happen. Still hope I'm wrong, but uh, we need to prepare for that eventuality.